This next poem is not about what you think it's about. I know it's usually best to let the work speak for itself, but I would just like to say a few things first. When I say desire is not fashionable anymore, what I really mean is it fits the current trend like water to electricity. I don't believe that the poets have killed it. I don't need to explain about self-destruction on a pedestal, smiling at despair. You can all relate. And you know the difference between wanting to be in love and being in love. In fact, when I wrote this next poem, I think I was just wanting to write. I'm not even sure why I'm about to read it to you now. And I'm sure you all think I'm sleeping with the guy I mentioned, but all I can say is if I'm going to be accused of something like that, I'd better truly be doing it. As for that girl, she isn't a lesbian. That's just the way she eats her ice cream. Oh, and that thing with the birds didn't really happen like that. The birds keep mostly to themselves this time of year anyway. I'm not sure how I feel about the ending. Perhaps I should just read it and see what you all think. This poem is about the time I saw some roadside daffodils. It's called Daffodils. <laughs> this next poem is called Resonance. Lately when writing, I find I press the pen down too hard, impressing things not intended, as after you left, I could still see your footprints in the grass, and I began to entertain the idea that absence has a shape. Silence has a thought process, like trying to figure out what something wants to be. I didn't know I was a bell until someone grasped the ribbon looped between my shoulder blades, lifted, then struck, a note of pure pleasure. I knew then that longing is reckless and emptiness is possibility, that what has been diminished has the capability to expand, and if bliss were to lay its hands on me, I would shatter. Uh, this poem is written uh, in reaction to the death of my cousin a few years ago. It's called The Funeral, and it's for Dawn. When death finally let me go, I came home to the same side of the record, twisting in the turntable. The blinds were all open. There was a run in my thigh highs, a tear at the lace. Somewhere along the way, a button had popped off my blouse. I wondered when the next crisis would come. The burial was not as quick as his death, our funeral clothes stiff and dark. He was just 22, and I've passed that now. Some days I am selfish to hope I won't go much further. I put some water on to boil, but I could not make myself stop staring. Not even the poets with their idiot children could distract me. If death had an idiot son, he would be singing praises on high. I am glad I have no children nor want for any. This last poem is called, What I Want. I want to sweep the floor and feel good about it. There's pleasure in simple domesticity, a little egg of happiness, a tea kettle full of solitude. And though there are times when one day feels like 10 years, I don't mind, I've got a book to read. I want that book to be full of the fitful joy of poetry and for that euphoria to enter my body, ravish it like a disease before finally settling in my spine to live forever. A ridiculous grin, my only scar, and an ongoing fever, a glow that makes people wonder. I want that glow to turn to afterglow, the color of a crushed velvet blush after drinking too much and finishing off with a shot glass full of unrequited love. Then walking out to the midnight street, I want to be greeted by a little stray dog of desire and let him show me what to do with all those words that have been smashing their heads against mine. When I die, I want it to be because my heart is too big and just can't take the beating anymore. Then there's you, of course. I want you to look up from this poem and fall in love with the first thing you see. Thank you. <laughs>